Hey guys, so this week's Friday tip is pretty simple and probably something that isn't really going to blow your mind, but it may be something that even though we know to do it, we don't always actually take the time to stop and do. So distraction equals irritation so much in our parenting and in our marriages. And there's so many times where we have stuff going on in our mind, whether we're listening to something or whether there's the beeps going off and we're trying to cook dinner and the kids come in and want help and our husband comes home from work and he's trying to kiss us and we're just like get off me and you know what if our minds were more at peace and I'm preaching to myself here if my mind was calm and if things weren't so loud in my head I probably wouldn't be that irritable now I am a podcast junkie okay and there is a time and a place and I love it I believe in what Zig Ziglar called drive time university if I am in my car there is a podcast or an audiobook or something going on and I'm always learning and pulling all that stuff in and I absolutely love it we have information to so much or access to so much information these days sermons whatever it is and it's so easy and we can grow and learn so much just with going about our everyday lives and our everyday stuff. So I'm always listening when I'm doing laundry and when I'm cooking and when I'm exercising. But sometimes we don't understand why we're not hearing from the Lord. And sometimes God says, it's because you're not stopping to listen. It's not that he's not speaking. And the fact is, even if I'm filling my mind with sermons, with great stuff, if I am constantly filling my head with some type of audio, some type of noise, I can't stop and hear his gentle whisper. And even in the morning, if I have my quiet time, is my quiet time actually quiet? And I do, I get up before the sun and the kids, I get my coffee and my Bible and that's my time and that's my spot. But trying to make my mind be still is so hard. And I am starting to learn that unless I get out of the house, whether it's for writing, working, that kind of thing, or just being with the Lord, I can't focus. So something I'm learning to do is to just go for my walk or go for my rollerblading or my biking, which is what I love to do, get on my bike and ride around, leave this at home. I love this and I am thankful for this. But what I've got to learn how to do is to be able to go on a walk and just be. Just let the Lord speak to me see the sunshine coming through the trees and hear the birds if it's early in the morning or even let the rain fall on me if that's what it has to be but learning to be still it doesn't just mean getting away and doing your own thing and taking time for you even though that's great silence the voices in your head <laughs> stop this all the time when my kids are home and I'm trying to make dinner that's not a good time for me to be trying to listen to a podcast or finish up an audiobook because I'm stressed and I'm distracted and that makes me irritable and so I have to get back to the root of those things it's not the kids and it's their time so I need to learn to prioritize that and um, another thing I've done is I've learned now your schedule is different than mine your life is different than mine your kids are different than mine so you have to look at your own life but one thing I'm learning is Tim goes to the gym every morning at 530 he gets home about 630 which is the time I wake up the kids and then the kids and I have to leave about quarter or about 7:40 for school so when he gets home I can wake up the kids and while he's in the shower and the kids are brushing their teeth and getting dressed I can walk out the door even for you know 20 minutes and go for a walk or go for a bike ride and I can clear my mind if I just don't put stuff into it and just let the Lord minister to my heart some days he may have great things to say some days he may just want me to be still and know that he is God so I'm learning that it, even when I feel rushed, if I get away and take the noises out of my head and just walk and just be outside of the house and quiet, he can speak to me that way. Now, what if Tim has to go to work and you're not back yet and blah, blah, blah. I know. Our kids are almost nine and six and we live in a little community where I can walk around the area here and be very close to the house. We don't have a house phone. We bought this track phone off Amazon and it stays in the drawer at all times. But if I'm going to be maybe walking around the neighborhood or whatever, my kids are competent enough to brush their teeth and wait for me to come home for five minutes if Tim has to leave before I do, but they have a way to access me. It stays in the drawer. It's only on when someone is not here immediately so that they can grab us if they need us. And it, Michaela knows how to use it and it 
calls and texts mommy and daddy and that's it. So this is a great way if you don't have a house phone to still have some type of connection if you need to run out the door or if you're walking around your neighborhood and you're still close to the house but you don't want your kids to have no way to contact you if they need to. So this is the way we have solved that problem. So hopefully that will help. Um, these are great but go for a walk and leave them home and see what happens. So have a great week or a great weekend since it's the Friday tip. But anyway, bye guys.